today I'm going to show you how to deploy a Prisma GraphQL API in AWS. So I'm Caleb Briggs and I am the owner of Tycoon Software. Uh, my offices are right up here and we like to use the latest cutting edge technologies to bring our partners um, vision to reality. So anymore, I personally like to entertain my wife and kids, three years old, that's the majority of my time, my three year old kid and well, I've got one that's eight months old now. So I also enjoy grilling out, hunting, fishing, golf, drones, RC cars, games, and travel besides programming, but most of my time is my family. So, so disclaimer, everything that I'll be covering today is on the Prisma IO doc site and they are really good in my opinion, but I would just, I'd just like to show you my findings. We're gonna cover a handful of uh, tools in AWS. Uh, one is cloud, for, for cloud formation templates, AWS Fargate, uh, Elastic Container Service, Prisma, and the Prisma CLI. And then Prisma also has, you can go MySQL, Postgres, and Mongo right now and they're bringing a DynamoDB and a handful of other databases. So a little bit about Prisma, I know I have a slide, I'll get into that later of what Prisma is. But has any, anybody in here used Prisma? One, cool. It's pretty new, so, and it's changing constantly. So the cloud formation temp template is hosted, and um, they change it daily because they're releasing uh, versions of Prisma probably every couple weeks or so, if not every month. And the features they've been enrolling are really, really nice. And one that's not out yet is the Prisma Admin. Um, I'll get into that later because I haven't even told you what Prisma is. But let's demo the CloudFormation template. Here, can everybody see that very good? As far as size? Does it need to be bigger? Are we good? Okay. So we're gonna get into there. So right here we just have templates, parameters coming into the for formation template. We've got what version, so that's just Docker versions. Um, what host, port, user, password, connector, and I'll get into where those actually come into play. But we're using it throughout here, and I'm just gonna briefly show you, um, and these are just more parameters. I need to get past here. So here's our VPC, our subnets, And this is, again, for the Prisma service. Our gateway, attachment, just all the AWS networking that we have to get configured for our Fargate instance that's gonna run the Prisma services. And it's load balance, so there's load balancer in here, and there's uh, HTTP listeners, there's Docker um, compose configuration, and all that's in here. And then this link right here on this slide uh, or it's in their Prisma GraphQL template. It's on GitHub, so it's open source. Um, so let's go back to here. Does, any, does anybody wanna go into that any deeper? Okay, cool. Here we go. So what is AWS Fargate? AWS Fargate basically wraps around Elastic Container Service and Elastic Container Service Kubernetes, which is EKS, um, to allow, basically abstract away you managing servers and clusters and all, all of that fun stuff in AWS. 
So elastic container service, I just want to touch on two things. Today we're not going to be using ECR, elastic container registry, but if you were going to deploy your own app in um, AWS, you probably want a private Docker container and you can do that in AWS by pushing your Docker container up to ECR and then you can reference it back through the cloud formation template I just showed to actually run your service in uh, Fargate. So what is Prisma? So Prisma is basically an ORM as a service is the best way I know to, to describe it. It's more than an ORM though. You've got uh, subscriptions, um, nested querying that's, that handles N plus one. If you've used GraphQL at all, it has taken all the pain points as far as talking to your database and nesting queries that are you know, in levels deep as far as grabbing objects that are subqueries on top of subqueries. It also can manage your schema, so you can create and update the database schema with the GraphQL SDL, which is the, just there, and we'll get into that in my demo, and I'll show you exactly how we will deploy and update our database with just a simple command or two. And all the CRUD operations in Prisma is very robust, and the querying has been extremely good. Also, when I deployed um, Prisma, the first thing I did is I load tested it, and before I ran into a database connection limit, I was getting 4,000 requests a second. Um, so it was extremely, and I, the only thing I think the limit was was the connections. So I didn't update my database to allow no more connections, but I have no doubts that it would have been well. So let's get into the code. So I'm going to show you my test folder. Okay, that's over here. There we go. So I'll show you this Docker Compose file for local use right here. Um, your image, and then here's your environment. So I have MySQL here. If you have your own MySQL database you want to talk to, by all means use it. But you can do that with Docker for local instances. But right there, if you just tell it what connector, the host, port, user, and password, which is the same thing we use in our uh, cloud formation template. I actually want to show you that first. Sorry. What's the command for clone your, anybody? Clone your, no, 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 clone your screen. What? Yes, I want a mirror. There we go. Mirror. That's going to help me a bunch. Thanks, Mike. Oh, I got signed out. Of course. OK. So all I'm going to do is use that YAML that I showed earlier and show you what the output is. I'm not going to actually do it, but I'll just show you. You're just going to import the template that they give you. You give it a stack name, and then here's those parameters that we were talking about earlier. And then you put in all your information, connect to your um, cloud-hosted database. And you can use Mongo, MySQL, or Postgres right now, and many more to come soon. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that while I was going. But here is the Prisma YAML. So here's my endpoint once I created that cloud stack. So to deploy a new app to Prisma, so here's the URL right here, and then here's, Prism, here's the name of your app, which is called Prisma, and then here's our um, environment. So it could be prod, dev, test, whatever, and then you could deploy the same schema to 
all environments with just a few simple commands. So let's do that real quick. And it's just Prisma deploy. Oh, can I blow that up? I know that's hard to see. There we go. Is that readable? Better? One more? Okay. So let's update our schema because right now all I have in my schema is user, which is email and password. But let me show you what that generates. So this is just the URL. And, they, and by default, you have a GraphQL API playground, which is what this is. But here's all my mutations from one object. Create user, update user, delete user. And then um, I should have, here's my queries. I can get all my users, get one user, and then there's my mutations, which are my create, update, and delete. Now I'm going to update it to be a more advanced, and I've got that already. So I'm just going to. So now I have a user with post and comments, and this is how relations sort of work. Um, so here's my type post, and here's my type po comment. So users have post, mini post. We're calling it post to user, on delete, cascade delete. Post has a, a title, publish, and, and a reference back to the user. Comments, so it's very ne three, three levels nested, and then references back to each object. So I'm going to deploy that and show you. Let me make sure of that. So there's what it created. Post, comment, and then updated user and then relations to each one. Okay, and then I'll update this. So now we've got a fairly more complex queries and mutations. So, oops. Come on. Let's go ahead and write mutation. Go ahead and create post. So I created a user with its own post all in one query or mutation. Um, and that's a nested object, and it references back to that user. So let's go ahead and create a new user with that post. So now you can get into nested querying. So let's go query the database and just bring back all the users, post. Also want the email of the user. Oh, title. Thank you. Boom. So now, with one query, again, there's our nested. And if we wanted to go level deeper, do comments, but for the sake of time, I won't do that. I'll quickly just show you how to make an app that uses that. So. I'm going to run Prisma generate 
which is going to generate our client API. So then I can test it using just this. But I've already generated it. So I'll go ahead and run the command. So what it's doing is creating the client, putting it in that folder right here, Prisma GraphQL, and then here's our client. And then just a quick shot at the Prisma. This is what is doing that. I said generate. I want the JavaScript client and putting it in this folder and put the schema in this folder. And then once I do that, if I run node test, it should bring me back those users. And it did. And I could define, and since I have it written right here, I'm going to go ahead and copy that and in that test. So you can have a where clause here, but I'm not going to do that. should bring back the nested object. And it may not be. Anyways. Yeah, it's supposed to. There's something I'm forgetting, and it's very easy, but it's something like this to where I can tell it when I query users I want to go deeper than one level, and this is how you would do that. So. See, anything did I forget? Nope. And then here's, if you want to play around with it, here's the link. And I'll try to post this slide on my GitHub so you can play, I'll leave it running for a week or so. So you can play with GraphQL. And any questions? Cool. So I did, oh, the question was, what advantages do does Prisma fly that GraphQL doesn't provide? Um, Prisma just chose GraphQL as its API layer. If you wanted to, um, you don't have to use it. You could, that client that I started building right there, if you wanted to have a REST API, you just use um, Prisma's as an ORM specifically, but on top of ORM, You've got nested queries, and you also got subscriptions that I didn't touch um, that are more service like uh, Google Firebase uh, is the only other, um, but, but you have to pay for it. This, you deploy it in your own environment, and you control the service. I hope that covers it. It's kind of, I kind of sidelined it, but. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate your time.